Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the podcast or revision session number 14, broadcasted today from the county of Worcestershire, just between the city of Worcester and Stratford upon Avon, in some very green and enjoyable countryside over these Christmas holidays. I hope everything's okay in the Farnborough area, the Hampshire area, and that you're working hard while also relaxing. Um, over this Christmas period. Well, today we're going to talk about control of breathing, and I'm going to look at the differences between how breathing is controlled as a passive process or as a as a resting uh, process and as an exercising process, and looking at the difference between the active um, exhalation during exercise and the passive exhalation during resting conditions. So first of all, our basic concepts, and look, breathing in, we of course term inspiration or inhalation, they're all the same notion, but we are looking here at an increased area within the thoracic cavity. Just to be absolutely clear, by thoracic cavity, we mean this area here, that is a cavity within the thorax or within the chest. And if that area increases, then because of a pressure gradient, the air from the outside world will rush in to the lungs within that thoracic cavity. So we're really interested in how is it that we increase that area to cause breathing into a kernel. Of course what happens here, we have contraction of two muscles. The first one you can see here, this is our diaphragm and that contracts and when it contracts it flattens out. So this is actually come downward to flatten out and that causes an increase in size of that cavity. We also have in here between the ribs we have what we call our EIs, our external intercostal muscles and what they do is as they contract the origin on the, top, on the upper rib pulls on the insertion of the lower rib and lifts the chest upwards and outwards, you see that with this arrow here, thereby increasing the size of that cavity, and therefore air rushes in. Now all of this is controlled by a part of uh, the brain within the medulla oblongata called the respiratory control centre, and this inhalation is actually con controlled by the inspiratory control centre. So one particular part of the respiratory control centre, inspirational breathing, is controlled by the inspiratory control centre. But interestingly, breathing out, we see up here, or exhalation or expiration, is a completely passive process. There is nothing contracting at rest for this to occur. Now our diaphragm, which of course was down here a few moments ago, it simply relaxes and makes a dome pushing the um, thoracic cavity upwards and making it smaller. And of course our external intercostal muscles, our EIs, they relax and therefore now the chest sits back down and moves downwards and inwards making that cavity smaller. And because this cavity, look at the area of it now, because it is now smaller than it was before there, of course air now rushes out because of the pressure gradient caused between the internal air of the lungs and the external air of the environment. Now we've already seen that the respiratory control centre is made up of an inspiratory control centre but it also has what we know as an expiratory control centre. We need to know what these two centres actually do. Well first of all, when we want to make inspiration deeper, the inspiratory control centre, of course we know already that it recruits and activates the diaphragm um, to contract but it also activates the external intercostal muscles. E eyes, but what else, um, if we want to breathe deeper, um, can the inspiratory control centre actually recruit? And I will kind of interesting come down here, and I'm going to argue that there are additional muscles which can contract to cause a more forceful contraction, therefore further increasing the size of the thoracic cavity. And I'm going to add those in for you. So as you can see here, the inspiratory control centre recruits three additional muscles, the scalenes, the pectoralis minor, which we have here, and a crazy word, this one, the sternocleidomastoid, which is also recruited when we um, breathe in more 
deeply and we use up more of our inspiratory reserve volume. But the question really needs to be asked, why do we actually recruit these muscles? What occurs to inform the Inspiratory Control Centre that these muscles need to be recruited? And of course you guys know already, don't you, we have our receptors which inform the Inspiratory Control Centre of the sort of state of play or the condition of the blood and of muscle and whether contraction is occurring. So, of course, what we have here really simply is the chemoreceptors inform the respiratory control centre that if we're exercising, we have a drop in pH or an increase in acidity. Baroreceptors detect an increase in blood pressure informing the respiratory control centre that movement is occurring. The proprioceptors in the muscle and the tendon um, inform the RCC and therefore the inspiratory control centre that we have movement taking place because we have increased tension in muscles and as a result the ICC further recruits more muscles to produce a more forceful contraction. So that explains how we breathe in more deeply but what about breathing faster? Well of course to breathe faster we actually need to breathe out quicker or more forcefully. So at this stage where we have a significant change in the chemicals in the blood, we have a significant drop in pH, we have a significant increase in blood pressure, we have a significant detection of movement in the muscles. Well, the inspiratory control center says to the expiratory control center, come on, help me out here, we actually need to go a little bit faster, and therefore the inspiratory control center activates during these processes to increase the rate of breathing, to make us breathe faster. And it does it in the following way. Well, what the experiential control center does is it recruits these additional muscles. First of all, it recruits the in spirit, uh, sorry, excuse me, the internal intercostal muscles. Again, these muscles lie between the ribs, but this time they pull downwards. So when they contract, they further reduce the size of the thoracic cavity. And exactly the same, the abs, the abdominals, the rectus abdominis actually pull down here on the um, lower part of the sternum, and they actually pull the ribs further down and back, further decreasing the size of the thoracic cavity and these muscles are controlled by the expiratory control centre which during um, exercise conditions becomes an active mechanism and therefore breathing out is now an active rather than a passive process. So a couple of key things for your exam. When you talk about things like chemoreceptors and baroreceptors and proprioceptors you must say what they are detecting and whether it's going up or down. That will inform the examiner that you understand those processes. So during exercise conditions, the chemoreceptors actually detect a lower pH or a more acidic blood environment. The baroreceptors detect an increase in pressure and the proprioceptors detect an increase in tension. Now you might be thinking, James, you didn't even mention the stretch receptors, the stretch sensors so far. And that's because these exist within the... Uh, lungs themselves and when the lungs are filling to a significant degree you actually have a, a, a way of preventing any further deepen, deepen, deepening of breathing and actually increasing the rate of breathing and the stretch centers are actually the things that inform the spiritual control center to activate to make breathing faster and we have a nice name for this it's called the herring brewer reflex the herring brewer reflex and if you could get that into your exam paper that would be a magnificent effort. The Herring Brewer Reflex. I'm going to clear everything off actually and write that in for you. So here we go, the Herring in capitals, make it nice and clear. Brewer Reflex. And if you get that in your exam, you can be heartily proud of yourself. So try and do it, and that is the mechanism where the stretch sensors in the uh, lungs themselves actually detect an overfilling of the lungs or increased stretch, and they activate the expiratory control centre to increase the rate, the actual rhythm of breathing, so we don't actually have to breathe any more deeply, but we can breathe faster. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the revision sessions so far and that they're useful, trying really hard to make these relevant. As I've said to you many times, if there's feedback you can provide on what is more and less useful, I'd be very, very keen to hear it. Guys, have a brilliant Christmas Eve. Tomorrow I'll try my very best um, to upload another revision session. I do have a few family commitments tomorrow, but I'll do what I can, even if it's a short uh, podcast, to get this 
up and running for you. Um, have a lovely Christmas Eve. Take care. Bye.